What have I got going on? I am about to build a roof out of tile and mortar. Kind of the old fashioned way. Why is it the old fashioned way? Well, hardly anybody anymore knows how to do it. In fact, is why I'm here in my grubby clothes is to put together and show the guys a more effective, efficient way of doing it. You know, I grew up with my dad doing it, my granddad doing this, so I learned it. What we're doing now is we're going to be working on the mix of the mortar. Uh, the mortar is what you set the tile into at the edge that creates the bird stop for it. And in the roof that we're doing now, on every tile we're using mortar. Now the most critical part about it is the mix, how you mix it. Uh, the way we're mixing this, and most cement is made in some sort of this same products, various forms. For example, if it's concrete, they're going to have limestone, gravel in it, instead of just lime. We're going to be mixing Portland cement with lime, and the ratio is quite important. Uh, what we're going to be doing is 12 shovels of sand, 4 shovels of cement, 1 shovel of lime. Now what this gives us is a type M. We're going to start mixing this right now. We're going to turn on the mixer here and we're going to start mixing some sand in it. It's already got a little bit of water in there. We're going to mix some cement in there and get the process going. back to good old days. I remember doing a lot of this when I was just a kid. Some of my first work was carrying blocks, cement blocks, and making mortar for the bricklayers on projects for my dad. A little too much in that one. All right, now it's starting to mix. All right, now the difference is going to be that we're on the ground, so we're going to be putting it on like this, where in reality, if you were standing up above this, and this is the same pitch of the roof that we're going to be looking at doing, it would be easier because you'd be up above it and your trial would be coming this way, so it would actually be a much easier install. We're going to do it like this and pretend it's okay. All right, so you put the bulk of the mortar you put the bulk of it right where the two tiles come together. For this, we're going to get a close inch and a half overlay on that. And you can see I could have actually put more mortar in there easily, been in good shape. So let's do that. Okay, so this mortar needs to be, this needs to be very full right here. So it takes quite a bit of mortar. You can't just have a very small amount because that's just not going to do it. And then you want mortar underneath right here. It's real critical because this tile needs to be setting in mortar. Otherwise, if you just have a little bit on the outside edge, it's just going to break off. So it's really easy to get it there. Just make sure you've got mortar on the outside edge. That's why I say if you were up above, you'd actually have that troweling motion like that. Very easy to do. So what we have to make sure is that we have enough mortar in there to fill that gap. This is called the bird stop right here. Okay? So you gotta make sure that we have enough mortar in there to completely cover that. Like that, right down to that drip edge.
Oh, that was a good fit there. Just exactly what I wanted is coming out in all directions there, which simply says that we've got enough on there to fill the gaps properly. And then as that starts setting, we'll come by and clean that up. We'll show you what that's like. See how it's setting up above. So it's actually going to get pushed down with the top tile. Of course, this one you have to squeeze into place, but that's what you want. So it fills those cavities all the way around like that. And when this one sets on there, it'll push it down in there. Instead of it being a void up in there, it's going to be full of concrete or very close to it. where I was, I got up to here finishing. Water's gonna come through the masonry anyway, but you don't want it building up behind there. Any water standing on roofs always creates leaks. So you wanna get this in early enough. You can see we waited a little long there. And you wanna get that hole as neat and tidy as you can. And that is a weep hole. Typical, you see these on foundations, you see them under the brick, you see them all over the place with the little weep holes. 